Hi, this is Chrissy from the Uncommon Ground and welcome to Sharp Spring Training. Today we're going to talk about lead scoring. And uh, if you've been paying attention through these uh, this video series, you'll see that slowly our company utilization score is going up. We're now at 41%. As we build this Coffee Matico account, this number goes up. And always remember that within these, you can always refer back and see what you're us utilizing and how much of it you're utilizing. And if you need some help, you can click through here and find some help documents as well on each of these, these subjects. So let's dig in. If you go to your contact manager, you'll see that there is a place for lead score here. Now we, ha we don't have it really set up, so there's no lead scores here, but that's what, a what we're going to do now. So we're going to go into contacts and lead scoring. Lead scoring allows you to organize and prioritize leads based on specific information that a lead is provided or an important event activity that the lead has taken part in. SharpSpring enables you to define custom lead scoring parameters. But we're going to go over what, uh, what that means and how to configure them. Here is the lead scoring page here. So lead score helps you prioritize what leads you should follow up with first. It helps you it helps you go through your day and go, okay, well, this guy has a, a lead score of 125. So I'm gonna call him before I'm gonna call the person with a lead score of 10 because of the le likelihood that the person with a lead score of 125 is, uh, he's more likely to buy than the other one. So then we can now prioritize our day. Salespeople can have uh, alerts when somebody reaches a certain lead score. They can go to that lead owner and, uh, and ask them to follow up or just alert them so they can go in and see what that customer has been interacting with. If they've uh, been on a certain page on your website, then, uh, then the salesperson will know that and be able to give them a call or shoot them an email um, based on that lead's behavior. This is the, the standard what's, uh, what's already set in SharpSpring. So if the company name is provided, we've given them 10 points. If you don't think that's um, that's really important, you could give them a five, or if you think that's more important, you could give them a 15. So all of these are customizable. I'm gonna give them 20 points for first and or last name. And I'm gonna give them 20 points for an email that's provided. So you can also assign points when, uh, when they're attributed to a specific persona. So let's add a persona rule. Uh, let's say we're gonna add 20 points points if this person is Ralph who is the restaurant um, the restaurant owner and we're going to add 20 points for Brian who is the office and lunchroom so I know these are going to be higher grossing sales so that's why I'm going to give them a little bit extra so that I can identify that they uh, they're they're worth a little bit more when it comes to the volume of their sales you can come back up here and these are the engagement rules so this is uh, on on their activity their behavior so if they've completed a form i actually want to give them 50 points they if they visit a page on the website i want to give them 10 points and if uh, if it's a tracked page from a campaign uh, i'm going to keep it at five points and for each email click i'm going to give them five points now if they viewed our media like our coffee infographic from the last one uh, the last module, I'm going to give them 10 points. And if they engage in your social media, so let's add our Twitter page. And let's give them 10 points for engaging in social media. Let's give them 10 points for engaging in Facebook. And let's give them 10 points in engaging in a LinkedIn post. There we go. And you can also have uh, in certain pages. So if you have, a, a, say, an event page, you can assign a higher uh, lead score as well if they visited that page. And if they visit our media, our coffee infograph, let's give them another 10 points. So here you go. These uh, graphs also show you the distribution of the engagement lead scoring and your fit lead scoring as well. So here is uh, activity and decay timing. So you can keep these lead scores relevant uh, by disregarding old engagement events with your lead activity period. 
and use the lead score decay to set the time frame for when the score is half as valuable. So if they uh, if they get to a lead score of 100, but in six months, if they haven't bought yet, they're still not worth 100. So there, there's going to be some decay. So when would you like that, uh, that decay to have its half-life? So it depends really on what the length of your pipeline is. If your pipeline is you know, a week from the time they peak their interest to the time they purchase, then possibly you'd want your half-life to be in three weeks. But if your pipeline is a six month long pipeline, then you might want it to be your half-life to be at eight or nine weeks. So you can also turn that off, but it's nice to have that decay on so that it's, it's real data. So now what we're going to do here is when updating lead scores, ignore activity older than you can ignore things within a certain time frame, or you can use all activity. And here is save or save and rebuild all lead scores. So we're going to save and rebuild all lead scores. So, and you'll see this warning performing this action will affect all lead scores across the entire company. Yes, I'm aware of that. So there we go. So now, it's going to rebuild those scores and when we go back to the contact manager you'll see that everyone's been reassigned a lead score and it's been rebuilt and that's it for today's module if you have any questions or concerns feel free to contact us anytime talk to you soon